there are also questions where we call them compound angles compound angle is something like this sine x plus something something would be added or subtracted when this happens it's a compound angle so let's do an example sine x plus 10 equals to 0.5 remember this whole thing is the angle x plus 10 is the angle and we call this the compound angle so for convenience let me call this theta sine theta is 0.5 so this is positive so positive is first quadrant all positive and second quadrant sine positive then the basic angle would be x plus 10 is sine inverse of 0.5 sine inverse of 0.5 if you remember the common angles so when we have sine inverse of half that means 30 degree so so we have 30 degree so the basic angle would be 30 degree and 30 degree the common mistake is to break this down and find the value of x so you write 30 minus 10 so x equals to 20 degree this cannot be done because this angle is the basic angle and it cannot be broken down so x plus 10 is the basic angle and in the first quadrant it is the same as the basic angle 30 and again x plus 10 is the basic angle and in the second quadrant it is 180 minus 30 which is 150 so that's it this is the sum now when you write down the answer your answer has to be in terms of x so it is only in the last line that you have to write down the value of x so here x would be 30 minus 10 20 and here x would be 150 minus 10 140 so when you do a compound angle then this is how you do the sum let's do another one suppose you have tan 2x minus 15 equals to minus 1 that means tan is negative in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant so this is tan negative because this is sine positive and this is cos positive so this would be tan negative again the basic angle would be 2x minus 15 is the basic angle tan inverse of remember when we find the basic angle we take the absolute value so instead of minus 1 we just take only 1 so that would be 45 degree you can check from the most common angles you should have this memorized so for tan theta we get 1 in 45 degree which is pi by 4 in radian so we have horizontal line 45 degree here and 45 degree here so 2x minus 15 is your angle so the first angle here is in the second quadrant which means 180 minus 45 which is 135 degree let me check 180 minus 45 is 135 degree and 2x minus 15 equals to this is 360 minus 45 which is 315 so this would be 360 minus uh, 45 so this is done now only at the answer only now we can break this down so 135 plus 15 divided by 2 we can calculate this so we have 1 135 plus if you send this 15 to the other side it becomes plus 15 it becomes 150 now if you send the 2 downstairs divided by 2 that would be 75 so the first angle would be 75 then you have 315 plus 15 which is going to be 330 divided by 2 that is going to be 165 so these are the answer so when you do a compound angle remember whatever the value is sine x sine 2x sine 3x if something is added or subtracted to that it is called a compound angle and in a compound angle you cannot break it down you have to keep it like this now there is another thing called multiple angle multiple angle works similar to compound angle 
but the difference is that whenever you have sine x instead of sine x you have 2x this is a multiple angle and nothing is added here if something was added to this that would be called a compound angle so sine 2x is a multiple angle or sine 3x equals to something suppose equals to 1 by square root of 2 or equals to root 3 by 2 or suppose cos 2x is equals to uh, half or cos 3x equals to uh, 1 by root 2 something like that whenever we have some number multiplied to the angle and nothing is added or subtracted then we call it a multiple angle the difference between multiple angle and uh, only x is that you have to take 4 if it was sin x there would be two values of x because if it is positive it will fall in two quadrant first quadrant and second quadrant if it was negative it would fall in two quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant so there will always be two values so whenever you have sine x or whenever you have cos x there is always two values depending from 0 to 360 degree but if you have sine 2x what it means what it implies is that you go through the value once and then you go through a complete revolution of 360 degree and go through it another time so there would be four values so 2x means another revolution so whenever you have sine 2x instead of two values you end up with four values whenever you have sine 3x instead of two values you end up with six values this is what it means you just keep on adding 360 degree to it so let's do an example which clarifies this let's start with sine 2x equals to 1 by square root of 2 so since it is positive it would be in the first quadrant and it would be in the second quadrant so the basic angle again is 2x you cannot break it just like in compound angle we didn't break this you cannot break this so this would be sine inverse of 1 by square root 2 which would be 45 degree so if you take a look here so this is sine by the way 1 by root 2 and root 2 by 2 is the same thing this is in the rationalized format so you can see that this is 45 degree I recommend you memorize the common angles so 45 degrees so this is first quadrant 45 degree this is second quadrant 45 degree so 2x you cannot break this this is the basic angle so first quadrant 45 degree and 2x second quadrant this is the first quadrant this is the second quadrant 180 degree minus 45 degree that would be 135 degree so in a regular sum if it was x two of the values would be done but since this is twice x we have to go another circle all the way back again so it would be from here we'll get another set of values 2x equals to 45 degree plus 360 that would make it 45 plus 360 that would make it 405 degree 405 degree and from here we'll get another value that would be 135 plus 360 you see all the way around again that would be 135 plus 360 degree that would be 495 degree 495 degree so we are done instead of two values we are getting four values because of another revolution so x equals to so 45 divided by 2 at the end we break this down 45 divided by 2 is going to be 45 divided by 2 22.5 22.5 135 divided by 2 135 divided by 2 is going to be 67.5 67.5 all is within the range of 0 to 360 degree then 405 divided by 2 5 divided by 2 is 202.5 495 divided by 2 495 divided by 2 
247.5 so we have four values so whenever you have multiple angles remember we have twice x or thrice x usually twice x is given and you do the sum you take the twice s as the basic angle and then you add 362 instead of two answers you get four answers in case of m compound angles whenever you have something uh, that is added something is added or subtracted it could be x or it could be twice x it could be anything but whenever something is added or subtracted we call that compound angle again in compound angle you uh, get the basic angle and keep it intact it you break it down at the end we are almost done in C2 trigonometric uh, solving questions there's one one more sum that we have to use the trigonometric identities this is the fundamental identity sine squared x plus cos squared x is identical to 1 this three lines represent that this is exactly equal to this from here we can get two more identities which is sine squared x is equals to 1 minus cos squared x so instead of sine squared x we can write 1 minus cos squared x and instead of cos squared x we can write 1 minus sine squared x you can actually verify this using the most common angles if you take this tree and if you plug in the values you will see how this thing works for example if I consider uh, sine 30 degree so sine 30 degree is half so sine square is half squared plus cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2 so cos 30 degree is root 3 by 2 so root 3 by 2 whole squared so that would be 1 by 4 plus 3 by 4 if I add that would be 1 plus 3 and that would be 4 by 4 equals to 1 so sine square of any value plus cos square of any value has to be equal to 1 so this works uh, another thing we could take something else we can take this value uh, 60 degree so sine 60 degree is root 3 by 2 and cos 60 degree is half so you see the same thing happens and if we plug in any value if even if you take 90 degree we will see that sine 90 degree is 1 so 1 square plus cos 90 degree is 0 0 square 1 square plus 0 square is 1 so this is sort of in arithmetic using the values if you plug it in you will see that this identity holds true now there is another identity this is the fundamental Id identity there is uh, another identity called sine x divided by cos x is identical to tan x that means whenever you have sin x divided by cos x it is equivalent to tan x let's check from this arithmetic whether it actually works with the common angles or not so if we take sin 90 sin 90 is 1 divided by cos 90 is 0 so it means 1 divided by 0 and we know 1 divided by 0 is sort of undefined undefined we can also write it as infinity this symbol means undefined so and uh, tan theta tan 90 degrees undefined we cannot calculate it uh, we can try something else sine 30 by cos 30 sine 30 is half cos 30 is root 3 by 2 so half divided by root 3 by 2 so what happens this half and this half cancels so 1 by root 3 is left over and we can see the tan theta is 1 by root 3 this thing is nothing but rationalized version of 1 by root 3 we can rationalize it remember in C1 we multiply root 3 by root 3 upstairs and downstairs so 1 into root 3 is root 3 root 3 into root 3 is 3 so it is the same thing as root 3 by 3 rationalized version of 1 by root 3 so you have to sort of remember that whenever we talk about identities we are talking about something that can be done and checked by arithmetic so when you see questions uh, regarding trigonometric identities one of the most common type of question is this one in the exam suppose you have root 3 sine x minus cos x equals to 0 for doing a sum like that you have to use the trigonometric identities that sine by cos is tan otherwise this cannot be solved because there is no square that you can use 1 minus cos square or 1 minus sine square so it's obvious this fundamental identity cannot be used you have to use sine by cos so what you have to do is square root of 3 sine x equals to cos x so we can write sine x by cos x equals to 1 by square root of 3 so sine x by cos x 
can be written as tan x 1 by square root root of 3 and then you can solve this so this is one example another example could be we can get 5 sin x equals to 2 cos x so again we can write sin x divided by cos x equals to 2 by 5 therefore tan x equals to 2 by 5 and then this can be solved so whenever you have sin x and cos x using the trigonometric identity that sin x by cos x is identical to tan x we can actually solve this sum